Okay, so for the psychodynamic theory, which is what we're doing this podcast about, there's a main person that does it. <clears throat> His name is Sigmund Freud. He's like the father of psychology. And he pretty much created everything from how to interpret your dreams to what you really what you really think about um, when it comes to you as a child. Um, there's three major parts of his psychodynamic theory. Um, part of the psychodynamic theory part is the id, which is like kind of I guess you would say your bad side, um, and the ego, which is kind of like your normal functions that you have on a day-to-day basis, and the super ego, it kind of fights with the id. Um. Yeah, that uh, it would make sense, but I don't. It's I don't think the id is necessarily bad. It's just not what we would consider socially acceptable. So, like for the id, it would be like um, your desire to eat an animal. If you were extremely hungry, it would be your desire to protect yourself over, um, I guess making money that's that's where the id would come in because it's it's almost the animalistic instincts from when we were animals during evolutionary periods um for the ego it's it almost works as the human part of you it's um i guess you could describe it as like how you partake in relationships like socially like how you chat and playing sports and stuff like that it's kind it's like the middle ground it's where it's just normalcy okay, and so, I'm hmm? sorry so would you say that it's kind of like in Jim Carrey the mask with um before he finds the mask and so he's acting on normal and he's attracted to this girl but he never finds the confidence to talk to her and then when he finds the mask and he puts the mask on then the mask turns him into this like this id I guess you'd say of him because it's it's defining all his characteristics that he doesn't always show in the movie um i think the movie um the mask is probably the best representation of the way that it works because it it shows you that it's not necessarily a bad thing however it's obviously not necessarily a good thing it just takes away those social barriers like being drunk when you're really drunk you're not you don't have your super ego conflicting with your id you don't have your ego you're just blackout and doing something whatever it is um i think it, the, the mask it, it represents and it helps illustrate the way that it would work if it were unconstrained you would you would just do whatever you wanted you would never fear of retaliation or anything like that and that's 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 the that's where the super ego comes in because super ego is very important it's like it's the, it's the police of your of your of your mind. It's the part that tells you, no, don't sit there and kiss that girl who obviously doesn't want to be kissed by you. Don't sit there and jump on top of the table and make as much noise as you want. Don't do that. That's stupid. I think that's that's where the super ego works. And that's that was something Sigmund Freud really tried to portray to us was that we were constantly having these conflicts in our brain. Okay. And so, I guess you say that you see that really in today, and it's really interesting as you get older, because as a little kid, you don't really care what you say, just like, um, I know my little cousin, he'll just say what's ever on his mind, so I guess you'd say that, um, he has more of a, I don't know, an id that's almost like his ego, because he has no filter, almost, but that's also part of growing, I guess you'd say, because you have to learn what you can and can't say, and you have to learn from what you can and can't do. Um, I think the id is what you are born with, but the super ego is what you learn. I think that would be the best way to turn that into an analogy, just because of how everything works out. Um, it's... It's, it's almost complicated to explain the way the id and the, e, and the e, super ego work. However, I think the most complicated would be the ego because it's not it's not one side of the, or of the spectrum or the other. It's in the middle, so it doesn't have a clearly stated or clearly understandable so, meaning. So it is, I guess you'd say, a mixture of the two. It's like the, the combination of the two, um, the id and the super ego, 
so that when they're, I guess, fighting against one another, they create the ego, and then, I guess it would be, like, the id would be the little voice in your head where you don't say, God, I really don't like that girl. It would be, that would be the id. And then on the other side, that'd be kind of a, a problem if you have conversation going on in your head. But um, I guess that's kind of where it would go, um, where you have it kind of like in the little cartoons of Tom and Jerry, how um, they'll get the little devil and the little angel. One's the super ego and one's the id. Yeah, um, that, that's, I think that's a great way to analyze that, and I think that's a really good way to illustrate how the psychodynamic theory works with the id and the ego and the superego. Well, I think we pretty much covered every part of the psychodynamic theory when it comes to Sigmund Freud. So, well, this is the end of the podcast.